Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Business Breathers, a live webinar series hosted by Goodman Group at Brock University. My name is Abdul Rahimi, and I'm the director of Goodman Group in the Goodman School of Business. Goodman Group is pleased to be hosting this webinar series, and thank you all for joining us today. We have well over 100 registrants for this session today. Goodman Group is a community-focused learning and development services provider that works to support entrepreneurs, professionals, and businesses through our consulting services, startup support, and accredited certificate programs for professional and executive development. I'm pleased so many of you could join us today to take a break and take part in this webinar. This webinar series was designed to focus on areas of leadership, management, innovation, financial, and societal impacts of trending topics, where faculty from Brock University and leading industry experts will be speaking about these topics. This webinar series is hosted on Wednesdays from 11 to 11.45. Before I introduce today's webinar leader, Let's pause for a second and review today's agenda and format. We'll begin with a 30, approximately, minutes of the leader speaking and its slides and session will be led by Dr. Yor Scholz, which is then followed by a Q&A session. So I invite all of you watching to put your questions into the chat feature. That should be enabled momentarily. Now, I'm pleased to introduce Dr. Jochen Scholz, a marketing professor at Brock University who specializes on argumented reality marketing, social media controversies, and branding in digitally infused and hyper-connected societies. He published the first ever conceptual marketing article on argumented reality marketing in 2016, which won Business Horizon's Best Article of the Year Award. Since then, he has been exploring how augmented reality can deepen consumer and brand relationships, how it helps consumers to feel more competent and autonomous in their consumption projects, how Pokemon Go players co-create and transport into hybrid realities, how managers deploy AR initiatives for their brands, and what strategic opportunities different types of augmented reality providers for marketers. Dr. Scholz has taught augmented reality marketing since 2015. Since his move to Brock University, the Goodman School of Business has become the first business college worldwide to offer dedicated AR marketing courses, both at undergraduate and graduate levels. Yo shares his fresh ideas with the broader business community as well. He publishes research-driven insight on marketingsquad.com an online magazine he founded to share his own insights as well as the work he creates with his students. Yo has recently teamed up with Adweek to serve on its academic council and publish commentaries on AR and digital marketing. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, I hand it over to Dr. Scholz. Yo. Thank you, Abdul, so much. And I welcome everybody as well. Good morning, good afternoon. Uh, good evening, wherever you are on the world. Um, I am flipping over to share you the presentation slides now. So bear with me here for just a moment. And I hope you see this. Uh, welcome to Brave New Worlds and Brave New Worlds they are indeed. Um, and I want to show you a couple of fresh ideas about augmented reality marketing. Mm -hmm. And Abdul already uh, told you that we are first, and that's really exciting because we are the first university offering AR marketing courses at the undergrad and the graduate level with our MBA starting this fall. And the undergraduate course is underway since actually last week. So we're very excited about this. Diving right in because we have a lot to go through. What is AR? Right. AR is a new marketing technology, and I totally agree that there can be a lot of confusion about it because there are people like me who love to throw out a lot of different terms and acronyms about it, right? 
you probably heard about AR and MR. MR is a fancier version of AR, if you so want, that is more immersive. But for our purposes, it's really the same. For our purposes, the most important key difference we need to know is the difference between augmented reality and virtual reality. All of the other terms are just part of that whole ecosystem of that spread between AR and VR. It's easiest maybe to think about that difference between these two realities, AR and VR, in terms of a video first. If you see on the top right here, the dragon, it lands on that stadium screen. And if you look carefully, you actually see the movements are phased, right? So the dragon moves first and then on the screen and then again, if you just see this, right? So if you are in that stadium, you can see that dragon on the screen with the naked eye, but also with your phone or maybe AR glasses as it flies by right now. That is augmented reality. The dragon seems to be with you in the space you are, the stadium in this case. Down below, we have a virtual reality environment. And there we have these two gentlemen with these heavy VR goggles on paddling on a stationary bike somewhere in a small room, but they seem to be flying through the air on these flying machines. Here, it's more like they left the room and they are now completely else, somewhere completely else. That difference between adding something to our world and going into a different world between AR and VR is also reflected in our definitions of it. Augmented reality is all about the real world environment and we are adding virtual computer generated information to it like for example that pikachu virtual reality is all about computer generated simulation of worlds that take us away from our environment so even though this user here stands in the middle of his living room with his er glasses on vr glasses on sorry he actually seems to be elsewhere he has like a dome around him and in this dome he sees a different environment both of those technologies ar and vr they are both highly immersive technologies or at least they can be but the way how they immerse your customers is different with ar we're talking about immersions through entangling the digital and the physical in one place and bringing it to together in this complex dance. With VR, we're talking about immersion through extracting you from your normal environment into a completely different environment. This presentation or webinar is about AR, augmented reality, and you've seen many examples of that. You know about Pokemon Go, you know about shopping apps like Sephora, for example, you know about Snapchat, and you know maybe about other apps, but maybe some of them don't know yet that you could, for example, measure the size of your carry-ons using the Kayak app, and then find out before you go into the plane whether or not it will fit into the overhead bins. That's a good tip for traveling, by the way. All of those things really just give you a taste for what opportunities exist with AR. It could be about gaming, shopping, bonding between your customers or customers with customers. But in general, and that's the reason why I am so excited about AR. I've been from the very first time I saw it, uh, the first time back in, I don't know, the early 2010s. AR has a lot of different applications in our daily lives. There are a lot of use scenarios out there with AR, and I think that what makes AR so fascinating for us as marketers. There are more use cases and formats I can go into right now. This is just a couple of them, and if you have any questions about any of those in particular, feel free to send them out in the comments so we can discuss afterwards in our Q&A, uh, or send me a message if you have question about any one of those or something else. Uh, I want to just quickly, before we point out that there are uh, a couple of those we're kind of looking in today, we're looking briefly into the active packaging in the lower left side here of the slide. And I will also mention something about the marker activated AR applications. 
which are a great way to get started, by the way. So these marker activated, they're a very affordable way to get your feet into augmented reality marketing. For now, the takeaway here is really, there's a lot of different AR formats. And for us, the interesting and important thing is to see what is the problem we want to solve or what is the situation we want to address and then looking for AR to do that job in the best way possible. Rather than starting with, oh, I want to have an app, my own app with AR in order to be part of the AR marketing movement. That might be good for you to have your own app, but it might also not be good for you. So be open to all of those different AR formats. I'm excited about AR because it is the next transformation of business and society on a similar level or maybe even higher than what we have seen with social media and before that with the web. This has just given you an idea of the difference again between AR and VR. In terms of revenue, like AR is already leaving VR in the dust and by Three years from now, it's going to be six times as big in revenue. But here's an even crazier number. Two years ago, in 2018, the AR market was about $6 billion. In five years, it's going to be $200 billion. That's a factor of 33. That's exponential growth right there. And it's so fast, it's, it's very difficult to wrap our heads around it. So I thought I'd help us a little bit out here. And imagine you're like me who started playing Pokemon Go in 2016, the day it came out. And I caught my first Pikachu ever on that first day in my office, right there, sitting on my desk. But you didn't, right? You didn't catch a Pikachu on your first day, on your first week, on your first month. You played every day for a year and you didn't catch a Pokemon. For 2017, you didn't catch a Pokemon. A Pika, Pika, Pikachu, and then it's finally in 2018, you got your first Pikachu. Oh, that felt good. But then you kept playing, and then whoop de whoop, seven years later, you have a whole herd of them, 33 of the bunch, right? That is exponential growth. Jay Samet is the vice chairman of Deloitte and the author of Disrupt You, so he knows a thing or two about disruptions. And he says, just as the internet disrupted virtually every business, AR will cause seismic realignment. So I'm glad that you're joining us today because we need to get on that train as marketers in order to be not left in the station. So what is the road ahead? When can we expect AR to really approach market uh, mass adoption? Well, you maybe are familiar with the Gartner hype cycle and that measures the hype of an emerging technology and AR went through all of that starting with 2006, and it's past the hype. It is at the end of the throw of disillusionment, ready to kind of make its way into the plateau of productivity. It is actually not longer listed as an emerging technology by Gartner. We are at this inflection point for the last couple of years, uh, 17, 2018, 2019, and everything we need is pretty much in place or falling into place rapidly. Right now, we have 900 million devices as an install, install base for mobile augmented reality. That's the AR which happens to our phones. In five years from today, that's gonna be two and a half billion devices ready to go on mobile augmented reality. Already today, you can buy yourself AR smart glasses. And yes, they have still the court going on and it's not a company you are familiar with, but they look pretty much like normal sunglasses, don't you think? And I, um, and this AR glass is actually also powered by Qualcomm, which is one of the biggest chip manufacturer in the world and one of the biggest player in the AR space. And I talk to people at Qualcomm and I talk to other people and the general idea is that within the next three to five years, we're going to see these lightweight AR glasses to come to market or XR AR glasses come to market, which we can wear the all, all day long. And they're going to be from premium brands. And right now, you know what brand I'm talking about. It's all in the works. And we surely see those things coming to market 
in the next couple of years. Well, about two thirds, more than two thirds of professionals working in the AR and VR markets, so the XR professionals, they adopt mainstream consumer adoption sometimes between 2021 and 2023. That's a relatively recent study from October 2019. The obvious question is, of course, what is COVID-19 doing in all of that, right? And I think personally that COVID-19 acts as a catalyst to some extent. I mean, to some extent, it also delays hardware adoption. That's going to be also likely. But in terms of the adoption of the experience, I think it acts as a catalyst because it changed our behaviors, right? Some people even started their own hair, uh, cutting their own hair. And as you maybe can tell from the mullet on my head, I'm not one of those. But we changed our behavior. Some of those will bounce back in the pre-COVID-19 age, but many of those will stick around in one way or another. And one of the big ones I'm having my eye on is online shopping, which pretty much exploded over the last two months. Uh, another one is video conferencing, the thing we're doing right now. All of those activities probably are sticking around, maybe not to the extent, uh, same extent, but to some degree, and AR is facilitating those. So I think COVID-19 here acts as a future catalyst for the mass adoption of augmented reality. Okay, here are five solutions to problems you may know already or not that you have. The first one is having efficiencies in customer service, in manufacturing, and other places of your operations. If you equip your service professionals with AR devices that they can interact with customers, and the uh, customers also have those devices or using smartphone apps, and you can operate on this remote servicing idea, you see cost reduction of 75% or more. A couple of telecommunication companies who send out their service workers into the field with AR, they saw a return on their investment on the equipment of a factor between 500 and 900%. So really great cost reduction and also making things a lot faster. That would be in manufacturing, servicing, etc. AR is also really great for advertising because it makes it easier for you to reach a target audience that is normally very, very hard to reach, Gen Y and especially Gen Z. Now, this example here is uh, from McDonald's and I'm loving it because it is not only an example that is really great for marketers, but also for people who are coming in from maybe an HR site. So the idea here was that you scan that snap code and again, it's like one of the uh, most affordable ways to get into AR that unlocks a lens, that's then putting a hat on your head, a McDonald's cap, and then you take a 10 second snaps of you where you talk about yourself and send it off to McDonald's. That is your job application. And I love this for two reasons, because number one, it is something which uh, is reaching the right audience and motivates them maybe to do a job which is, let's say, less than fulfilling. And number two, Think about it. In a way, this is the perfect way to kind of test out those new recruits because when I'm walking into McDonald's, I give that person who's standing behind the counter less than 10 seconds to make my impression about the overall experience. So if they have 10 seconds to make an experience on you and you'll find them convincing, they probably convince me when I'm walking into the store. So reaching hard to reach audiences, second solution for AR for a problem we face in marketing but also in HR, of course, and other places. A third one solution is really about e-commerce. And AR is often mentioned to be a full funnel medium. We use it for creating awareness, especially for the consideration phase. Like, will those glasses look good on me? Will that couch look good in my living room? But also more and more, you see that in the left side here that about 36% of respondents expect to increment or to increase sales within the next two years using AR. AR is great for making customers feel more confident in their decision to buy something. 
and maybe even more important, it also reduces return costs, which is one of the biggest problems we have in e-commerce. But there's one thing I want to make sure we all kind of realize. It is a full funnel medium. Now, the question is, does it always work on the first go? Will I buy a couch just because you show it to me the first time on an Instagram filter? I don't think that. I also don't think that AR's only or even biggest opportunity lies in anything that comes before and up to the point of making the purchase. If you think about the customer journey, it is considering, evaluate, and buying, but then everything after is also important. How do consumers enjoy the product? Will they advocate for your brand or product? Will they bond with you as a brand and then maybe move into a different loop, into the loyalty loop, which cuts out considering other brands, your competitors? That would be nice, right? I think AR has like really great opportunities for the post consumer uh, for the post purchase phase, the consumption phase, by really targeting those different stages. You can help them enjoy the product more, or uh, provide a lens that gives them a stage to act out their love for your brand, or just act out something they love about themselves, and therefore create word of mouth for you. And you can deepen your relationship with customers for example, through having your own apps. One example in the skateboarding community, which is really about an acting community and facilitating this tribal affiliation, which kind of speaks to all three of those post-purchase phases, would be what um, Santa Cruz skateboarding company is doing. By the way, here's a fun fact. When you live in California, you see people running around with these Santa Cruz sweaters everywhere like the the logo with the yellow on the red uh thing i i learned a week ago or two weeks ago actually that this is for a company and not just for the town and it's this skate uh boarding company they created the filter or the application here with the screaming hand which is their brand logo as well and in the first week they captured over one million impressions with it so quite a great success for them but it really is about the brand, if you think about it, right? So what can you else do with customers or with a augmented reality that is more about customers? Now, here's my suggestion. And if somebody here listens in from Santa Cruz, you feel free to copy it. Or if you have your own skateboard company, copy it as well. Consumers consume and buy brands, not because they want to have that physical object but because they want to do something. They want to engage in a community or a tribe. They want to engage in certain activities. And those tribes have formed around these certain activities where it's not about just products, but also social relationships and achievement as the tribe together, but also you in the tribe. Now, how awesome would it be if you had a way to celebrate achievements and augmented reality is the perfect fit for this. For example, think about when those four guys here, they're sticking their moves and you filmed it already with your cell phone, if you could just push down on the screen and suddenly some AR would come in and celebrate that achievement. How amazing that move was. That would be pretty cool because it elevates the person who's doing that move. It celebrates the community and the tribe as a whole. It enriches the consumption experience of all of those people and therefore makes them to use your app more often. It's a great way to increase loyalty in a very playful way that resonates with customers. Another solution AR provides is about branding and storytelling. Budweiser, for example, loves to tell the story about how it's the all-American beer, and they even change the name they have on their cans around the Independence Day from Budweiser to America, right? But they also have an AR filter, and that AR filter doesn't change the brand into America. It changes you into America, or at least Uncle Sam. And that is a just more personal, more engaging 
kind of being part of that brand story. Instead of listening to a story, you are at the center of the story. You are the protagonist. And that, of course, then not only creates an emotional effect, but also often sharing, especially since it is happening on social media. Way better uh, story experience because it's coming from listening to acting as a part of the story as a protagonist. Here's another example. Uh, around Cinco de Mayo, so a few days ago, but a few years ago as well, um, Snap, sorry, um, Taco Bell came out with this Snapchat lens. It transformed your head into a taco. It was one of the earliest AR campaigns and still today one of the most successful ones. Now they kind of used a nationally available lens. Everybody who uses Snapchat had that lens available and it cost them around about $750,000 in media cost. Now, I know that sounds a lot. And remember, you don't have to pay all of that much. You can use the snap codes uh, and the media costs are pretty much down to zero almost in that case. It's, jet, it's, it's very small media costs. But the $750,000 Taco Bell spent also got them 224 million views in just one day. About six and a half million unique people played with the app for about 24 seconds on average, creating two and a half years of engagement within just one day. That seems to be good, but we have to put it into a context, right? So let's put it into the context of national TV advertisement. And let's just focus on these 224 million views in one day. If you broke this down into a CPM value, so how much does it cost you to achieve a thousand views? That would be $3.35. Compare this to national cable TV of $14.5. AR is outperforming national TV by the factor of 4.4. And don't even get me started on like how much better that experience is, right? Instead of just watching a TV commercial, I'm in that commercial. I'm part of that. I'm a taco, right? Look at me, I'm a taco. It is speaking to our desire to experience things and to be part of things. And it's reaching that hard to reach audience as well. But uh, there must be always a but, unfortunately. The biggest strength, strength of AR is also its biggest challenge. Because AR is a participatory medium. It requires participation. Without people participating in the AR, there is no experience. Nobody, no brand ever has gotten a prize for having the prettiest snap code. It needs to be activated by customers. It needs to have engagement before anything else can happen. That's why AR experience requires participation and that requires resonance. As a brand, we have to find ways to resonate with customers, make our experiences resonating with them, and then we will be successful. Another great uh, opportunity of AR lies in that it creates the products we have in our daily lives as consumers into owned media channels for companies. And of course, we can use it to display information. For example, opening hours of our winery or something like this, or new releases. And that is one application for AR, to be sure. But I think there's even bigger opportunity in creating more um, experiential AR applications that are enchanting customers. Here's an example of Rebel Wine, which provides and makes really good wine, by the way. I'm a fan. So try them out if you see them. They have these beautiful labels which are very textile, and they come to life if you use the AR applications. So you see how the clouds are moving in and the fire is coming down in this apocalyptic version of it. This also leads, by the way, especially today, where we're living in times that seem to be the end of the world, to a lot of social sharing. But it goes beyond of just sharing it on social media. It is a social experience in the tasting room, which I've seen many, many times while I was still living in San Luis Obispo and the 
uh, company was up in Pastor Robles and I drove by a couple of times. Uh, people hang out together and they explore those applications together and the experiences together. I think it also creates really strong brand relationship, uh, consumer brand relationships, because products and brands are often a part of our, what we call in academia, the extended self. It's a source for our identity. But normally, if we connect with a brand that is either a very still object or it's happening over a screen, it's mediated in a way. But here, the object itself comes to life. It is part of our life already, but also becomes an active media channel for the brand. So I think those become really interesting, intimate experiences and intimate relationships that could be very beneficial. So my argument here is don't think about AR as just providing information. Think about it, about what kind of experience can we create that surprise customers and enchant their lives. How do you get started? That's a good question. There are four ways for you to use AR uh, those are different modalities, and I definitely don't have time to go into uh, details here. Uh, roughly speaking, it is a platform AR, so your social media apps, but there could be others as well. But it's a third-party uh, app that is used by consumers, and you just utilize it as a channel. It could be your own app. Think about your IKEA or the Rebel app I just showed you. It could be a web AR, which is a new kit on the block, and it's really interesting. Or it could be one of the earliest implementation, AR installations. Now, important to know is that it really depends on what you should use. It depends on your trade-off between reach and costs. It depends on your trade-off between how easy do you want it for your customers to be to enter your AR experience versus how much flexibility you would like to have. And it depends on how much you want to integrate it into your overall marketing strategies or how much effect you're hoping to get out of it. In the interest of time, and again, feel free to ask questions about this for our Q&A or reach out to me individually if you have more questions. For the purpose for us right now today, my biggest advice is think about the upper left corner here, the social media platforms. It is a high reach with an audience which is very thin to AR, so people are using it already, they're used to it, and you don't have to spend the 750000 a couple of hundred, a couple of thousand dollars will get you quite a long way. If you have your app already, then you can think about adding AR, into, uh, uh, um, AR components to it, like for example, Sephora did, they already had the app and they added more components to it, there I would recommend that you really think hard about like how it integrates into your other activities. One cool development we have to keep an eye on is web AR because it's so easy for customers to access, especially as they get more used to it. And it's also relevant for our days uh, today with COVID-19. When we were under lockdown or when this just lockdown just started, I needed to buy a new laptop, prepare for the AR marketing course we are launched at Brock. And I thought about trading up my size. I didn't know if the 16 inch would fit into my day-to-day -day life. So I just tried it out on my own living room here, like behind me, right, right there. That's where it was. And it was there through web augmented reality, through just the normal browser uh, I um, accessed via my phone. Outside of our today, I also think that these AR installations will make a comeback at some point of time because it's the only AR where we as marketers have control over when the activation happens for the augmentation. So we can trigger the AR and that leads to surprise of customers and really creating a deep emotion experience. Again, more than we can go into detail right now, ask your questions. Today, reach out to me later, whatever works for you. How do we start? So first of all, we have to realize that it is really time to start. 87% of uh, larger businesses are already exploring, piloting, piloting or deploying AR and VR in their businesses. Not everybody, rather few, less than a third, have articulated a vision for mixed reality, and that is what I call the competence gap. 
So know that you have to start soon. You have to take this new trend and technology seriously, but also be assured that if this all seems new to you, you're not alone. And you already did the first step because you signed up for today and this is giving you more competence in this. Here's a similar study by BCG, uh, same idea, 55% already use it. Those are the largest advertisers in the US. 35% uh, are planning to use it within the next year or so. But again, most of them are in the experimentation phase. Only 10% have it fully integrated. Again, that competence gap. The lack of understanding is listed as the biggest impediment for adoption in the corporate world. And this is what we are here for. That is why you are here for as well, understanding more about AR. And I find it really interesting that costs are only half the worry of lack of understanding. So there's really a big demand and I really congratulate you guys for taking the first few steps to learn more about AR. What are the next steps? Learn more. First thing you wanna do, you wanna hire my students. And I'm serious, hire my students. They are the first graduates coming from a course that specifically focuses on AR marketing. We spent an entire term on focusing on understanding what AR marketing is and does. We check out industry examples, we're connecting with industry leaders, and we are running a term project where we actually create an AR campaign for a real world clients. So they come with a lot of experience and I want you to hire them. They're ready at the end of uh, the term early July. So reach out, train your employees, like send them to the recording of this webinar and check out additional webinars. And also head over to marketingsquad.com, which is an online magazine I started a couple of years back for me and my students to share our insights and analyses about augmented reality. Second step is definitely experiment and experiment quickly. Time for experimenting is running out. Social AI, as I mentioned, is probably the first bet. You can go dip just one toe in, just doing a marker-based AR uh, at a certain event you have. It doesn't have to cost a lot of money to get into AR. Even though it's technically not AR, but as a baby step, just experiment out with geo filters on uh, Instagram. Also for your event, very cost effective and just observe like what kind of lift and engagement can we generate. Consider running a student project with us. When we are running this class again uh, in the next academic year, we will also working again with uh, clients. So feel free to reach out to me if you want to kind of put your name in for a really cool, interesting student project. And then finally, strategize. Doing AR is getting easier and easier, but being successful in AR therefore it's getting harder and harder. We have to center around the customer experience, not about the technology. We have to understand what are customers looking for? In what stage of the customer journey are they in? What are they struggling with? What is the project they're working on and we can facilitate it? How can we help to enrich their lives alone in individual relationships and within their communities and tribes? We have to understand all of this first and then find an elegant solution with AR. Connect it to your brand. That's a big thing. We saw that brand stories are great, but experiences are better. But in order to create an experience that resonates, you have to have a good idea about your brand story in place first. So if you haven't really figured out your brand story yet, that's another great strategic exercise. And then last, integration is important. Not so much when you're experimenting, but for full-blown AR, you have to integrate it into your strategic goals, into the other elements of your marketing mix. Learn, experiment, strategize, and you will come very happy with AR, I hope. That's what I had for today. I'm really looking forward to hear your question and talk a little bit more. And I open up the floor over to Abdul again. Thank you, Yo. That was very insightful on the immersive, engaging, and ever-expanding field of augmented reality. And judging by the amount of questions and the caliber of them, it's been, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll start by uh, asking you, putting those questions to you to answer. Uh, but I do want to, 
preface this by apologizing to our viewers if we're not able to get through all of your questions in the time that remains. Um, so here's, here's the first one. Uh, great presentation. What are some opportunities Thank you. thought leaders, coaches or speakers can explore now to embrace augmented reality? And I, I think that that is a really important question and it comes back to where I kind of ended up. Um, experiment fast and I would say the social channels, the social platforms, they're the first step for you. And the, the thing you can really try out for yourself is do like a, uh, a geo filter on Instagram and create that. And that's really easy to create. You could do this yourself. And it, I know it's not technically AR, but at least it kind of gets you into this direction. Number two would be um, Snapchat developed uh, a tool called Lens Studio. And then Facebook has Spark AR. Those are development tools and you can try those out uh, as well. They're a bit more complex, but if you are computer savvy, that might be interesting for you. If you download the Snapchat app and you go into a specific setting there, they even kind of created a very consumer friendly version of the Lens Studio, which is a lot easier to use. And again, you can just try it out there. See how far you get. Otherwise, find yourself a freelancer, a studio, for a few hundred to a thousand dollars, you can get like a small AR campaign already up and going, and then you just use the markers to distribute it uh, for low media costs. So that would be my first few steps for you guys. Thanks, Yo. Here's another question that came through the live chat. Is AR as relevant to delivering service as it is to delivering a product? Can you speak to it? I, I think that's, that is a really important question, which we haven't paid too much attention yet in the industry, but I think there are signs which direct to the answer is yes, right? So one of the examples I showed was really customer service oriented. The person who is in the field, or when, when something breaks in your home and you kind of say like, ah, what am I going to do? You kind of connect with the customer service representative and they guide you through it over the AR connection. I know this is still operating on like a product idea, but you see already how services are enabled. Um, another thing which I find interesting is um, any service which is uh, operating on like something tangible, right? So I'm not thinking SAAS right now, but think about your hairdresser or think about somebody who's doing uh, a remodeling of your home. I can ask somebody to paint my walls here and I could try out using augmented reality all kind of different color combinations in my house which kind of I like best or same with haircuts if I want to color my hair if I want to go for um, for platinum blonde but I'm not 100% sure yet if this is my thing I can test it out using augmented reality so I think everything which is a service in which is provided in the physical world AR has a lot of opportunity yes Great. Here's another question that came at the time of registration. Is there any evidence that AR pays off, such as in branding or sales? I hope I answer that question. Like the, <laughs> I think the you comparison did it pretty well. to national TV. I just to remind everybody of the numbers because, hey, that's an important question to ask without doubt. That's yeah. why I put it in the presentation up front. Yeah. Um, the difference between the CPM between so cost per mil for how much you pay for a thousand views was three dollars thirty five cents for AR versus fourteen dollars sixty one cents for national cable TV. That's a difference or a factor of four point four. It pays off really well. Well, oh, but we, sorry, but oh. it's getting harder, right? So that that was like a couple of years back when AR was fresh, and now that we see more and more AR coming through. It will still pay off, but you have to make sure it resonates with customers mm -hmm. so that they participate because without participation, no experience. That was my big but in that. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry, viewers, if we have not been able to answer all of your questions. I know there are a number of other questions that came through, but we're running short on time. So thank you very much, Yo, for your insights. And thank you to all of, your, all of you, the viewers, for taking a break. 
and taking that time to watch this informative and insightful webinar. I will uh, talk briefly about what's coming up next. So our next webinar is happening next Wednesday from 11 to 11.45 again on the topic of ethics of exploiting loopholes with Dr. Paul Dunn, who is an award-winning professor of ethics at the Goodman School of Business. We hope you can join us next week. Stay safe, everyone, and thank you. Thank you, guys.